Ladies and gentlemen, let's read Gaming Twitter.com video. We have news from Intel and we have updates on both Broadwell and Airmont. So, first thing we should be talking about is Broadwell. Now, Intel actually demoed their SOC, and at the moment, currently, it's about 30% reduction in power consumption based on battery uh, compared to the previous generation, which of course was Haswell. Now, Broadwell is a, a 14 nm part compared to, of course, 22 of Haswell. Now, it's still unknown if we are going to be seeing a desktop version of Broadwell. It's still in debate. But the small version of Broadwell is actually pick pin compatible, I'm sorry, with Haswell. There will, however, also be a newer, smaller form factor version, and... The small package will be offered as a Broadwell ULXY series. Now, the idea behind all of this is to make a creation, or create rather, a tablet slash net notebook type of device that's much more compatible, of course, with traditional x86 architectures and much more besides. Haswell, despite being a lower power part compared to the earlier um, CPUs from Intel is still fairly high power requirements compared to, to traditional tablet solutions of, say, ARM. And so, obviously, Broadwell is going to give them those options. Um, ARM is not exactly ideal in many cases. Meanwhile, and off, to uh, off that topic and moving on to the Atom range, it's worth noting that Airmont which is, of course, Silvermont's successor, is being pushed for a 2014 release. Now, previously, Intel put most of their focus on laptops and desktops. And things such as, say, cell phone markets, tablets, those type of devices were considered to be secondary. Now, on the other hand, Intel are starting to realize that there's an absolutely massive market um, in terms of tablets and cell phones, and it wants some of the pie, basically. And so it's going to be pushing that. So although it's not going to be exactly equal, they are going to be pushing it to the point where they're on a much more level playing field. So what they're doing is now pushing for leading node technology. They're no longer, you know, um, a generation or whatever behind. They're starting to push it forward, which is great news for, well, everyone, in my personal opinion. It does give developers, manufacturers, a lot more options in terms of smartphones as well as traditional um, tablets and so on, which obviously does give us more options in terms of PC compatibility as well. Anyway, uh, that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Selves. In addition to all of this, not only is GTA, of course, going to sell well on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, but there are loads of signatures currently for the PC release. Indeed, right now there are 350,000 signatures for the PC release of GTA. And analysts are predicting that about 3 million Xbox Ones and PlayStation 4s are going to be sold, apparently about 1.8 million for Christmas for the PS4. And you can imagine that a bloody good percentage of those are going to want to pick up GTA 5. I think it's a pretty safe assessment that, you know, I don't know what the percentages are, but even if you say... 25%, it's probably going to be more than worth it because of how close the porting processes are now between PC and PS4. I would not be surprised if we do see a PC version of GTA. We've seen it, of course, with GTA 3, we've seen it with GTA 4 and its various spin-offs, we've seen it with Max Payne, and so it wouldn't surprise me if we did see GTA. I'm not saying it will be this Christmas, but... Who knows when it will be. I am very much hoping there will be a PC version of it because I would much prefer to pay, play either the PS4 or you know, PC version because I think it would just be incredible. But that's just my personal opinions, of course. Hopefully you've enjoyed the relatively brief video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.